So when China comes out with weaker than expected data, which it has this week, you might say to yourself, I don't need to worry about this. I don't own Chinese stocks. Doesn't matter. Your stocks that you own or maybe ones you're thinking of owning might have exposure to China. The world's second largest economy reported its first decline in exports in 17 months. So this is real. And analysts lowered China's second quarter GDP estimate. Revising forecasts, we kill for this, but it's still not great for them, 7.5 percent. So how concerned should investors be about not even China, but stocks they may have in their portfolios that, Jeff, is it too dramatic to call it a ticking time bomb in a portfolio? Well, I mean, I, I wouldn't go that far. I mean, anyone who's kind of been in China stocks for the last year or two, as I've already seen that kind of bomb blow up. Uh, but I do think that some of the multinationals that people have, it may be uh, kind of an exposure that they didn't know they had, uh, just like a lot of people don't know the kind of stocks in their mutual fund. The same thing goes for individual investments. You should know how your companies make their money. And just because you own a big multinational that's headquartered in, in Kentucky somewhere mm -hmm. doesn't mean that you're not exposed to China. Uh, and people need to know that. Well, that's an excellent point. And that's why you're here, because if they don't want to do the homework, Jeff Reeves of Investor Place is the well, one I got who has a job. done it. <laughs> yeah. Let's Let's start with sectors. What sectors might get hit hard by a short term continued move to the downside for China's economic data? Well, as we've already seen, I mean, the commodities market has just been hit really, really hard by a slowdown in China. That big sucking sound you hear is all the demand that's gone away from China's manufacturing. Anywhere you look, whether it's the trade data or uh, PMI, the Purchasing Managers Index, which is a gauge of manufacturing, there's just not as much stuff coming out of China. There's not as much demand for energy. So whether it's coal, whether it's base metals like copper or iron, uh, China just isn't using as much of it anymore. And when you add in the fact that we have a strong U.S. dollar and inflation is pretty subdued, um, there's just not really a, a chance of upside in, in either commodity pricing or commodity stocks. So right now I think we're looking should at, be very careful. Right now we're looking at a several, what, three-month chart of copper. Here's the year-to-date picture, and you can see how copper prices have fallen. Folks, this is a simple equation. China uses a lot of copper as they're building skyscrapers because it's in all kinds of uh, wiring and all of that. But the fact is that if it starts to fall, it means there's less demand. Jeff, what is the stock that people need to be worried about in this regard? Well, I mean, what the, the biggest commodity stock that I think people should pay attention to is BHP Billiton. It's a $100 billion market cap company. It's headquartered in Australia, too, which is closer to China, so it's got a lot of relationships there. But, I mean, like you said, copper. Southern copper is another major player that I would uh, pay attention to. I mean, of, of all the ones out there, I think BHP is it's not as agile just because of its size. It can't really ramp up if things do change. But I do think that the narrative is true across all base metals right now. Yeah, it's had a good year, but not so wonderful when it comes to us. Sorry, Keep moving because the camera's in my way. Okay, now let's go to what you talked about, and that is the auto sector picture. Tell me which name, if the Chinese are buying fewer autos, has an exposure here that concerns you. Well, I think Ford is the one that people should really, really look at because Ford has kind of been behind the China game. There are people there, or there are other companies that are already there that are making a decent amount of profit. Uh, Ford actually is kind of doesn't have that big of a presence in China right now. And a but lot of people, you know, Alan China Mulally was just on our show saying they were ramping up. And I would think this is the time to ramp up when the Chinese are more desperate to have this kind of investment. So Ford looks smart, don't they? Well, I mean, you got to look at it from a consumer perspective. I mean, last year, people believed in this China miracle for auto, automobiles, but the actual growth in auto sales was in single digits. It wasn't that grand. And people hold up this metric that 80 percent of Americans own cars and only 6 percent of Chinese do. It's a vastly different culture with a vastly different consumer class there. So I think we can't fall into the trap of thinking if you just build it, they will come. I mean, Ford does have growth potential there. But if we do kind of see a continued slowdown in China, I mean, are the entrenched players just going to seed that market share? Probably not. Yeah, it's not the $200 smartphone. And everybody said the same thing. Oh, there are a billion people in China that want smartphones. And your third pick when it comes to names here is someone that was is a company that was very much in the spotlight yesterday. And that is Yum Brands with about more than 50 percent revenue exposure to China. Yeah. And I mean, I think people might get fooled into thinking that it's, you know, the kind of bird flu thing or the regulators who are concerned about chicken in China. But I would caution people and tell them to look at the fact that McDonald's has also seen a lot of softness in their Asia sales, too. And while Kentucky Fried Chicken, you can blame it on the chicken mess. I mean, the, the bottom line is that it's Yum Brands has seen softness in Asian sales. sales. So has McDonald's. There are a lot of these consumer brands over there that, again, they believe in this China miracle. If they just throw up more restaurants, they're going to find more people. And to a, to a degree, that may be true. But number one, 
one, you can't bank on the growth is guaranteed. And number two, as we learned with so many stocks, Apple, the biggest of them all, expectations are sometimes more important than growth. And if a company like Ford is banking everything on Asia growth and they don't get it, or a company like KFC has 50% of its revenue there, right. I mean, a little bit can go a long way to affect your investments. So just Indeed. be careful of the exposure you got. Thank you for educating us, Jeff Reeves. And, and we like the no glasses look. Hey, Not thanks. Bad. I'm glad to be here with it. <laughs> Investorplace.com. Check out the website. Jeff's the editor. See you next time.